Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Working Conversations podcast, where we talk all things leadership, business communication, and trends in organizational life. I'm your host, Dr. Janelle Anderson. In the ever-evolving landscape of technology and automation, American workers are facing a growing fear, FOBO, the fear of becoming obsolete. The most notable rising concern is with two different groups. The first being those who are 18 to 34 years old with a college degree, and the second being professionals earning more than $100,000 per year. Across these categories, FOBO rose 12% from 2021 to 2023. The rapid advancement of automation, artificial intelligence, and other transformative technologies has radically changed industries and job markets leaving many employees worried about the security of their livelihoods. And in this podcast episode, we will explore the factors contributing to this fear, its implications, and potential solutions to empower American workers in this digital age. The term FOBO is a close cousin to FOMO, the fear of missing out. And FOMO has to do specifically with feeling left behind because you're watching things on social media as your friends and family are having great time and doing cool things. Patrick McGinnis coined that term in 2004 when he was in graduate school at the Harvard Business School. The fear of missing out is now in the Oxford Dictionary, which has described it as, quote, the anxiety that an exciting or interesting event may be happening elsewhere, often aroused by posts seen on a social media website, end quote. Fear of becoming obsolete is FOMO's workplace cousin. And while it was not named by McGinnis, some of the sentiment is the same. I'm going to get left behind. And this time it will affect my livelihood, not just my social standing or my perception of my social standing. Like FOMO. Now it's about being left behind in our careers. Fear of becoming obsolete is not new. It was described in an article in Harvard Business Review titled How to Stop Worrying About Becoming Obsolete at Work (laughs) back in 2016. So again, it's not a new phenomenon, but the significant rise in younger people experiencing it and the significant rise in people who are earning more than $100,000 per year, well, that makes it worth taking a look at. So that's what we're digging in today. Fear of becoming obsolete can be amorphous, messy, and complicated, but it can also serve as a pivotal force for understanding what's changing and can give us some new insights on how to cope with and effectively adapt to those changes. In fact, I think I can come up with at least a half a dozen reasons why FOBO is important and how it can serve you rather than hold you back. First of all, motivation for self-improvement. The fear of obsolescence can serve as a powerful motivator for individuals to continually improve themselves. It encourages lifelong learning, skill development, and personal growth. When people are afraid of becoming obsolete, they're more likely to seek out opportunities for self-improvement so that they can stay relevant in their careers. Secondly, it helps with adaptation to change. In a rapidly changing world, the fear of becoming obsolete can drive people and organizations to adapt to new technologies and trends so that they don't get left behind, whether that be by their colleagues, by the competition in the marketplace, or by someone else who wants their job. So this adaptability is crucial for survival and success in the dynamic, ever-changing world that we're living in, both for individuals and for organizations. Third, it can serve innovation and move you towards progress. The fear of obsolescence can fuel innovation, both for you individually as well as for your organization. It pushes people and entire industries to find creative solutions, to develop new technologies, and even improve upon the existing processes that they're using. The desire to avoid obsolescence often leads to the development of more efficient, more effective, and more advanced products and services. Fourth, it can stimulate economic resilience. When a workforce is aware of the possibility that obsolescence is potentially upon them, it makes them more likely to prepare for economic shifts and downturns. And this preparation can lead to greater economic resilience in the form of less debt, more savings, and the like, so that people can be prepared in case something disadvantageous does happen to them economically. 
So as individuals and communities, we become better equipped to handle job transitions and economic challenges. Fifth, there are some ethical considerations. Concerns about obsolescence can prompt ethical discussions about the impact of technology on society. We are certainly seeing this right now with all the discussion on artificial intelligence, specifically generative AI, and its ethical implications for the workforce. It can encourage a conversation and it can help us focus on being responsible and equitable as we grapple with technology changes and technology development. And it can also have an emphasis on mitigating negative consequences, such as people's jobs being eliminated. Again, when we are taking it on and having those ethical conversa those conversations about the ethics. Sixth, it can afford us a certain social awareness. So fear of obsolescence can raise our awareness about the challenges and opportunities that are connected to technology and technology changes in the workplace. So it can foster conversations about the future of work, education, our economic systems, and it can really lead to more informed decision-making on an individual level and more informed policy development on the organizational level. So in summary, the fear of becoming obsolete can really drive personal and organizational progress. It can foster innovation, promote adaptations and people being more adaptable and resilient and encourage those ethical conversations. So it does have the potential to serve as a catalyst both for individuals as well as for the organizations that they work in to actively engage with the evolving, changing, never standing still landscape that we are all working in. Now, if this conversation so far has you thinking that you might have a touch of FOBO hanging out, here are some ways in which you can start to address it and use it to your advantage. So overcoming the fear of being obsolete in a rapidly changing world really does require proactive and adaptive mindset. And let me give you a whole smattering of steps and strategies that can help you address this fear and thrive in an evolving environment. One or more of these reasons is bound to resonate with you. Embrace the concept of lifelong learning. Continuously acquire new skills and knowledge relevant to your field and your interests. Invest in education and training programs to stay up to date with industry trends and technology advancements. Next, broaden your skill set to become more versatile. Skills in communication, problem solving, adaptability, and emotional intelligence are valuable across so many professions and can really enhance your resilience in the job market if you find yourself in the job market. These skills can also help you keep, keep you relevant in your current role in the work that you're doing right now. Next, build and maintain a strong professional network. Networking can open up opportunities. It can provide insights into industry changes, and it can connect you with mentors and peers who can offer different types of guidance and support. And not only does this give you exposure to new and different ideas, helping to insulate you from obsolescence to begin with, it may also come in handy if you do make a job change, whether that's a decision that you initiate or one that gets foisted upon you through layoffs or, God forbid, getting fired. Next, stay informed about industry developments, emerging technologies, and market trends. Subscribe to relevant publications and newsletters, attend conferences, and follow the thought leaders in your field. When you're in the know in your industry, it is far less likely that you will be thought of by others or yourself as someone who is obsolete. Next, develop adaptability as a core competency. Be open to change and be willing to pivot when necessary. Embrace new challenges and view them as opportunities for growth rather than threats. Now, this might require a mindset shift for you. If you're the kind of person who doesn't readily embrace change, never fear. You can train your mind to be more adaptable. I've discussed it on the podcast before, and if you need a booster shot, go ahead and check out episode 14, Navigating Change, where I talk about some of the changes that I was going through at the time and use the model of change that I teach people on myself. You can also check out episode 103, Why Some People Are Slow to Change. Both of those episodes will give you some new ideas and new frameworks for being more adaptable and more resilient in the face of change yourself. 
Another thing is just to make sure that you're not fearing technology itself and that you're working to, and you might hate this word, leverage it. Familiarize yourself with digital tools and platforms because that can enhance your productivity and efficiency, and it can also keep you very relevant. So stay open to using technology as a complement to your existing skill set. And if you need to get a reverse mentor, that is someone who is more well-versed in the technology than you are because you're a novice at it. It might be a younger person, but not necessarily. And I talked about reverse mentoring back in episode 61, Why You Need a Mentor, Um, So you can go check that out, but maybe reverse mentoring would be the thing to help you get over your fear of becoming obsolete. All these past episodes that I've been mentioning will be linked up in the show notes, which you can find at janelleanderson.com forward slash 132 for episode 132, which is this episode. Um, Next up, periodically assess your career goals, your values, and your interests because we change over time. You're not the same person you were five or 10 years ago. Are you still passionate about your current career path? Are you still passionate about the organization that you're doing it at? Adjust your career trajectory as needed to align with your evolving interests and your evolving aspirations. Sometimes we lose sight of the forest for the trees because we're so thick in it day to day that we don't take that step back and assess whether it's still a good fit for us. So make sure you're doing that from time to time. Next, cultivate some resilience so that you can cope with setbacks and uncertainties. Because whether they be little bumps in the road or big major setbacks, they are going to happen. So understand that setbacks are a natural part of anybody's journey and that they do provide valuable learning experiences. We have to actually slow down and sometimes painfully take in the lessons of those setbacks. Another thing you might want to do is develop an entrepreneurial mindset, even if you're not an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs like me, we have to take a lot more risks. We have to, of course, take calculated risks. So be innovative. Take those calculated risks and look for opportunities to create value within your current role or organization. If you have no interest in being an entrepreneur or running your own business, then we call it intrapreneurial. So be intrapreneurial inside of your organization. You can have that entrepreneurial mindset, and it can really make a difference in terms of coming up with new ideas and shaking loose old thinking. Now, develop a career transition plan, and this can be part of building a financial safety net. It can be about what would be the next chapter in your career if you were going to change careers entirely, like if your existing industry or occupation just completely went obsolete overnight because of some new technology or some new competitor in the marketplace, what would you do? So think about what does that whole plan look like? What would it look like incrementally if I was to make small changes? And then if my whole industry or career went away overnight, what would I do to bounce back? And this can include small things like updating your resume and updating your LinkedIn profile. It can also include much more major things like having that big backup plan, that major contingency plan. Of course, don't hesitate to seek advice from career counselors, coaches, mentors, senior leaders in your organization, anybody who can provide guidance and insights tailored towards your specific situation. And then recognize and celebrate your achievements along the way, even if they're small. I'm a big fan of celebrating the small things. This can boost your confidence and your motivation to keep moving forward. So if you decide one of the things you're going to do is read a book on something new in your industry or read up on AI and how it's impacting your industry by doing some internet searches and reading some things in some trade publications or news magazines, then you know give yourself a pat on the back. Buy yourself an extra cup of coffee or something to really acknowledge that you are putting in the reps. Okay, so that's a ton of different things that you can do to overcome your fear of becoming obsolete if you've been experiencing some pangs of FOBO. Now, remember that the fear of becoming obsolete is a common concern in today's fast-paced world. It's not something to be ashamed of. Instead, it's an opportunity to grow and adapt. And when you take proactive steps like the ones that I just shared, you really can transform your fear into motivation that can help you navigate the ever-evolving landscape of work. Let me just share a quick success story of somebody who was experiencing FOBO. Now, 
if you've ever been in one of my speeches, well, I don't use this example all the time, but from time to time, I talk about having a passion and your passion might be for something that's not even work related. And so I will often use the example of the person who works on the assembly line at the local automotive plant. And I often say the Ford F-150 automotive plant because there used to be one of those here in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. It is no longer in service, but it was. So I often use the example of you know the person who loved to play in the rock band, their garage band at little bars and restaurants on the weekend, but their real job that paid the mortgage was working on the line at the Ford F-150 plant. So let's actually take a look at the person who's looking working on the Ford F-150 plant and zoom in on an example. Okay, so John works at the Ford F-150 plant. He's a dedicated assembly worker, and he started getting huge FOBO because of all the automation that's starting to happen in factories across the country, across the world, and he was really worried that his job was going to go away. So with all that uncertainty looming, he decided not to just let it get the best of him, but he used it as a motivating factor, and he enrolled in robotics courses at a local community college in the evening. So despite some initial struggles of going back to school, John's determination really drove him to grasp at first just the basics and then the more intricate details of automation through robotics. Now, it took a number of courses over a couple of years, but all of that work paid off when John was able to resolve something in the automated system. He could spot issues and places where things could be improved. And so he was able to identify some improvements that they could make at the plant. And he really kind of saved the day on something. Now, his expertise did not go unnoticed. Eventually, John was promoted to the position of a robotics technician as they did start to bring on more robotics into the plant. Like his fears were not unwarranted. This was happening. So he eventually then becomes an essential bridge between the automation and the people who, like him, were afraid of losing their jobs. So his journey from fear to mastering that which he was afraid of really shows the resilience that's available to workers when we're confronted with our own obsolescence. So I think his story really serves as a testament to the power of adaptation and determination as we confront the things that we're afraid of. In his case, it was the techno technological changes of automation that he knew were eventually coming his way. And in doing so, it reaffirms that the mindset, the effort, all of that work, when you put it in, really can help you not only survive, but actually thrive in an always changing work landscape. All right, my friends. So now you know all about FOBO. And I just want to leave you with a couple of closing thoughts. FOBO is real. Maybe it's not affecting you, but it might be affecting some of your colleagues. It might be affecting somebody who works for you if you're a manager. It might be affecting your manager as well because there's so many things that automation and artificial intelligence can now do for us. So just remember that the fear of becoming obsolete is indeed a formidable challenge that a lot of workers are facing today as things continue to morph and change. Be compassionate with those who are feeling it. Share this podcast episode with somebody who might be feeling it. And I encourage you to take on and embrace that idea of being a lifelong learner because the more you can approach change and uncertainty with curiosity and a learning mindset, the more likely you are going to, again, not only survive it, but actually thrive in the face of it. Remember, the future of work is not only about technology. It's about the values we uphold, the communities we build, and the sustainable growth that we strive for. We need to keep exploring, keep innovating, and keep envisioning the remarkable possibilities that lie ahead. As always, stay curious, stay informed, and stay ahead of the curve. Tune in next Monday for another insightful exploration of the trends that are shaping our professional world. Until then, my friends, be well.